still remember the last word that I told my mother. I told her just to hang on because we will win this revolution song. So I just love and I said, okay, you just take good care. And I don't realize that the last, that's the last time that I saw my mother. We never met again. Well, at the start, I think I'm only around 15 years old. We have a very tyrant president, and the political situations in the Philippines is not really stable. And I become a youth leader who organized young people to to tell the story about liberation theology. And before I knew it, I'm one of the three female commanders of the underground movement. It's very difficult when you are a guerrilla fighter, when you are pregnant. So I have my first child when I was fighting in the mountain. I was forced to give him up. And then I received the news that my mother died. After that, it's really changed me, you know. I've become hardened. I, I hate the world, <laughs> you know. And yeah, I, I lost. Yeah, I lost really my a real person there. So we have this uh, running gun battle with my eight-month belly, and we are trapped. We are surrounded by the military. So I have my, um, it's like my assistant who is always with me. We do a pax hole. And I, I buried my belly in the, in the ground to cover my child. And then he covered me with, with lugs, that, that man. And, and while she's doing, trying to cover me, he was hit by the grenade. And I know that he's still calling my name when he, is, he died. And then... We were put in prison. I give birth to my second child. We start our family in prison. So after four years in prison, um, we were liberated. Uh, I want to get my other son. I want to gather all my children together. And I said that that chapter of my life is closed. We were already in Manila during that time, and every Saturday we gather together in, in one of the university, and we talk about what's going on in our province and how can we work in the province. But what shocked us a lot is that there's a lot of missing children from the regions who work in Manila, child prostitution, you know, prostituted girls, and nobody knows where they are. So that's why we started to focus on children. So that's where the Visayan Forum started. The Visayan Forum becomes really my life and make me also reflect on what is the meaning of all of this and the sacrifices and where is my myself stands on this. And I know that's the only time that I realize that I have so much trauma within me that all that I have in my life, I don't have any time to mourn. I don't have any time just to process what's going on in my life. I'm just like a headless chicken who just continue to run and run and run and run. In the Wellbeing Project, I was able to go back to the original form of myself. I think it's the first time that I have really to confront all my guilt, that I have to confront with all my pains. I, I become cheerful again. I, 
I make a choice to become to what is really my purpose and direction in life. I do my work better now because I think I am coming from not from the hate. My dream is just really to to share the joy and the knowledge and the gift that I learned from the Wellbeing Project because for me it's really a gift, you know. Um, being joy, being happy is always a choice and it is not other people's business to make you happy. It's only you and you can make yourself happy and joyful in this life.